Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Andrew Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in Northeast Florida. And today in this video, we're gonna talk about the top five reasons not to move to Northeast Florida. So we're in, in order to put together this video, I went ahead and I talked to several clients who have moved down here. I kind of scoured online communities for people who have moved here and then went back, just kind of finding out what were the top reasons that people shouldn't move here. And we're gonna do that right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. And again, my name is Andrew Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in Northeast Florida. And every day, myself and my team help families just like yours with making a smooth transition to Northeast Florida. So whether you're coming immediately or down the road, we would love the chance to chat with you. You can give me a call, shoot me a text. In fact, we helped all these other families right here. And we can definitely help you too. So with all that out of the way, let's kind of jump in. So what are the top five reasons um well number one the number one reason that i found that people move here and then they move back to wherever it is they came from is they miss their friends and family well can't do anything about that obviously although i have had several clients move here from other parts of the country and they end up bringing their families too so there's one family how oh, between i think the two two adult children and the parents i've probably have sold five or six homes in the last couple of years uh one family another family a different one in particular they came down sold them a home then i sold her mom a home and then i'm just working with uh oh and then i sold his mom a home too yeah so anyway long story short um the way to solve that problem is missing your friends and family is bring them down too and <laughs> we've done that several times here so if that's something you're interested in, let me know all right so the number two reason uh, that I find that people don't like life in Florida is now I don't talk about politics on this channel and we're not going to do that now. So I'm going to kind of skirt around that. But the one thing I will say is that Florida doesn't really have a lot of the social services that other states have. And what do I mean by that? Well, for one, we have a much lower tax rate in most of Florida. Now where I'm at in Northeast Florida, I believe the taxes here are much less than other coastal communities in the state of florida like where i used to live in broward county which is down near fort lauderdale we lived down there up until 2014 is when we moved here the taxes in broward were a lot higher than they are here but in any case uh because we have the lower taxes we don't offer as many of the social services that other um uh what do you call it that other states offer and so in particular i have two very close friends whose children have we'll call it severe special needs. And as a result, they have to live up in the New England area because Massachusetts, Taxachusetts, and we've all heard that. But at the end of the day, they provide a lot of services that in Florida, we just don't provide. So I'm not saying it's like the Wild West. I'm not saying it's like Mad Max beyond Thunderdome. But what I am saying is kind of check into it before you come. Uh, one thing I thought was funny when I was doing the research for this um, for this video, I was on Facebook and I was on a page for people who uh, moved down or whatever. And she was looking for a, she's like, oh yeah, where can I go to get a nice four bedroom house on government assisted, like a uh, section eight housing. And of course, everybody's laughing at her. It's like, honey, you're gonna go on that list for years if you ever get anything and forget about four bedrooms in a nice neighborhood. Now, I don't know much about section eight housing. I used to kind of deal with it sometimes when I was a deputy, uh, not as a realtor here. But my point with that is again, we don't offer a lot of the social services that other states offer. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to you, but definitely check into that. So if you have like special needs in your family, or if you have anything like that, that's a real concern for you, then I would strongly suggest before you move here, you look into those things and make sure that we provide them. Um, okay, next, number three. What is the number three thing that I hear? And that is heat and humidity. There is no way around that. We have a lot of heat and humidity here. Um, oh, I was just up in uh, Washington, D.C. visiting uh, my best friend and, you know, whatever. When we flew back after the week, we walked out of the Jacksonville airport and I felt like I just got out of a sauna. I mean, it was crazy. Just the heat. Now, 
So the heat and humidity is a real thing. And I would suggest, I believe our hottest months are like around uh, July, June, July, August. So I would come down around that time period and see. Now, if you're coming from like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, places like that, if you got no problem with your heat and humidity, you're not going to have a problem with it here. But if you're coming from like Colorado, uh, California, uh, Washington, places like that, you may want to check. You may want to come and just visit and, and don't just do all the touristy stuff. You know, let me know before you're coming, if you're coming to the St. Augustine, Jacksonville or Nassau County area. But don't. Um, but yeah, come and check it out. Kind of look at a few houses, check out some you know real estate kind of stuff and see if you know, if it's too hot for you, if it's too humid, you know, kind of check and see the worst time of the year. I wouldn't come in like January uh, to see what it's like, although it may be. Um, but anyway, OK. So the other thing to kind of point out, though, about heat and humidity is and this is just my opinion. Um, and again, I've lived in Florida my entire life and I've always lived in coastal regions of Florida. So not too long ago, in fact, it was last year in the summertime, we were in Orlando in, and we were uh, shopping, you know, out, outdoor mall. And it was so hot that at the end of the day, we went to my friend's house. I just had to go veg on the couch. I mean, it was like, wow. And the reason for it is we're so far away from the beach. When you go to like Ocala, Orlando, you know, places like that, they really don't get the strong breeze that we get on the in the coastal areas. So definitely, um, you know, St. Augustine, Jacksonville, those places. So that's something else to kind of consider too. But okay, so we have heat and humidity, number three. Number four, insurance is higher. All right, I don't necessarily know if that's true or not. I don't, it probably depends. I was watching a, a video similar to this one, but the agent giving the, uh, the video lived in Michigan and he was saying like his auto insurance was, and it was insanely higher than mine is. And I'm assuming, now you can't really go by that because I don't know what kind of vehicle he drives. I don't know what his driving record is, you know, that kind of thing. But keep in mind too, when you're comparing insurances. So that's say, and by the way, this is something I do for people very often. In fact, I have a couple I'm meeting with next week coming down from uh, the Washington DC area. And I put her with one of our insurance agents so she can compare auto insurance. I don't know if that'll be a determining factor or not, but whatever, um, I provided that so she can look. But the other thing to keep in mind too, though, is our auto insurance, homeowners insurance, stuff like that may be higher, but we don't have a state income tax here. Now you still have to pay the same federal income tax. I'm not giving tax advice, but, um, but yeah, you still have to pay the same uh, federal taxes, obviously but we don't have a state income tax here. So maybe that would offset it. And I also believe our property taxes are much uh, less expensive than other parts of the country. In fact, not too long ago, I had a buyer I was showing homes to in Beachwalk, and the fees there are high for what we're used to in St. John's County. And so when I showed her, you know, the taxes, the CDD fees, the extra fees to join the club, you know, all that kind of stuff. She's like, oh, that's not very bad. And I was like, ma'am, I mean, this is fees on top of fees. I mean, from what I'm used to looking at, like, how is this not bad? She's like, look, where she lived in Pennsylvania, she was paying way more than that in just taxes and didn't even get into the HOA yet. So now if she's got like this swim up bar and all this crazy stuff for less money to her, it was worth it. And it wasn't a bad deal. So all that stuff, my point in with all that is, it's kind of relative. Now you're going to see a lot of stuff with homeowners insurance, especially in Florida, and people losing coverage, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. And that happens everywhere, actually. I think California has it too. One of the things that I have run into is it's not an issue when you're buying a new construction home, but when you're buying a resale, a couple of things can happen. Number one, if you, the buyer, have had previous insurance claims, that could come up and raise your insurance. Or if there's ever been an insurance claim against the house, you know, like the current owner, I saw one once where I guess the power was out for like a day and uh, he lost all the food in the refrigerator and he filed an insurance claim over it. So, OK, uh, but anyway, it ended up uh, causing a problem when he went to buy the house because another house, a different one, because he already had a claim. But OK, so if the house had previously had a claim that could come up, if you've previously at, at your home have ever filed an insurance, homeowner's insurance claim that could come up. The other thing that comes up pretty regularly is if the home has an older roof, if the home has an older HVAC system, or if it has an older water heater, any of those things could also trigger higher insurance costs. And the way we kind of, way I kind of handle that is 
Again, if you're buying a new construction home, then those things aren't going to be an issue. But if you're buying a resale, which I do work with resales too, um, the way I handle that is, you know, during the inspection period, you can pretty much get out of the contract uh, for any reason that you need, that you, the buyer, deem worthy to get out of it. And so what happens is I like to bring the insurance agents in right in the very beginning during that inspection period. So an inspection period is a period of time that you as the buyer have to do a full inspection of the home. Um, and, and again, in our area, it's not true everywhere in the state of Florida, I'm not practicing law, but with our real estate contracts in our area, typically uh, the buyer at their sole discretion can get out of the contract during the, um, the inspection period. So what I like to do is bring the insurance agent involved early on. And so they'll tell us, do we need a wind mitigation? Do we need a four point inspection? They're very similar to home inspections. The difference is they are done on an, a special insurance form. They then go to the insurance agents and then they can give us a quote. So like I had one recently where it's in Jacksonville, it was uh, San Marco, that's where it was. And it's the older, I think the home was built in the 1920s and the water heater wasn't that old, but it was an older water heater. And so I think we got a credit like for $500 towards the uh, the buyer's prepaids and closing costs. And then what we did with that was, is the buyer just kept that. And then afterwards, I think they spent a thousand bucks and got a new water heater like a week after the closing. So there you go. So number four reason is insurance is higher, uh, which that's kind of relative. And you kind of have to look at that taxes and everything and just kind of put it all together and decide if that's true or not for you. Okay, so number five, this one kind of gets me. There's nothing to do here in Northeast Florida. That one I very strongly disagree with. Um, you know, okay, so and it really depends on where you're coming from. But do we have like Broadway musicals to the point like um, like New York, like Manhattan would have or something? No, <laughs> we do have uh, the Florida theater. We do actually have some shows, you know, different you know theaters in the area. I wouldn't say it's as much as what you'd see in New York City, but we do have a lot of other things that you can do. Like for instance, um, you know, New York City, can you drive on the beach? Probably not. I don't know. I don't even know if there is a beach there. But no, here we absolutely do. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is I drive a, a four door F-150, four wheel drive. I love to put the, um, you know, my family will put together in the car. In fact, two, three weekends ago, we had our neighbors. We all kind of piled in the truck with the dog and we uh, we went we drove right out of the beach pitched my uh, 12 by 12 tent not like a tent like you camp in but one of those big like event tents had that thing set up we had freshwater showers um you know sandwiches from Publix. but we could just back right up to the ocean and it was awesome uh, we love doing that also uh hunting for shark's teeth on the beach now it doesn't mean our waters are teeming with sharks that's not the case at all i'm not saying we don't have sharks i'm just saying um but most of the shark's teeth that you find are prehistoric in fact, most residents here, if I thought about it, I would have brought it in here, but most residents in this area, or I can't say most, but many of us have a mason jar in the kitchen or something, and that's where we keep our shark's teeth when we go to the beach. So my kids and I love going and looking for shark's teeth. And it's not just shark's teeth too, we find other types of fossils as well. But anyway, so that's a lot of fun to do on the outside. Um, see what else do we have? Lots of outdoor activities, uh, kayaking, um, paddle boarding, fishing, boating, jet ski, you know, you name it. You can go to the historic district of St. Augustine, go cruise the fort, um, you know, cruise, excuse me, uh, walk around the fort. There's lots of great museums. In fact, our favorite museum, uh, now we, our kids are four and seven, four and seven years old. So we love the Pirate Museum. Uh, also, you have the um, the Jackson, excuse me, the, uh, the Jacksonville Zoo, the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. I mean, there's lots of things to do that are outside. So where I disagree, I wouldn't agree that there's nothing to do here, but what I'd say it's probably different than where you're used to. Um, yeah, we don't have skiing because we don't have snow. <laughs> but um, so anyway, yeah, so there's lots of things to do on the out. There's lots of things to do. Most of them would be outside type things, but yeah, we have lots of things to do in this area. So there you go. Uh, kind of curious, see what are your thoughts? Did I leave anything out? What are your favorite things to do here? Leave it down below. And did I leave any reasons that you should not move to Northeast Florida. You know, throw it down in the comments below. would love to uh, hear what you've got to say. Last but not least, if you again, if you're looking to make a smooth transition to Northeast Florida, you can give me a call, shoot me a text, the number's down below. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Bye-bye.